everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video. Today I'm super excited to share this with you. This is something I've never done before. I have had honeybees before, but never solitary whole nesting bees. So this um, kit right here, this is from Crown Bees, crownbees.com. Thank you so much to Dave, the uh, owner of the company who gave me this to try out. And we're gonna get into the details of this and why I'm trying this on my small scale market garden and why you might wanna even try this out for your own garden or home to increase the pollination of your plants and flowers and fruit. Um, and it's quite fascinating. I'm not being paid or anything to do this, uh, but I am working with Crown Bees in order to test this out. So thank you to Crown Bees for this kit so that I could use it and experiment with it and bring this information to you guys because it's incredibly fascinating. Now I found out about Crown Bees from uh, Kevin of Epic Gardening's podcast and he had a, did about five or six episodes with Dave. I'll put some text here to show you. I think it's like February 28th to March 4th were the episodes where Dave was on and I, there's a lot of details in there about these type of bees. It's super fascinating. I highly recommend listening to them. But in short, what's so incredible about these solitary native bees, honeybees are actually from Europe or from other places in the world. Um, the ones we have in America are European, usually Italian honeybees. Um, these are native bees. And what's so incredible about these is the way that they pollinate. They can pollinate far better than the Italian honeybees, which are more focused on gathering pollen to create their food source and many of their products within the beehive itself. These mason bees, which you may have even seen on flowers here and there, these um, are a little bit more sporadic. They're, they're not as efficient in the way that they um, collect the pollen, but what they do is they're much better pollinators. And what Dave was saying on the podcast is that the pollination is so good that some of these orchard growers needed to thin their trees more because there's so much more fruit production. So it's really exciting because as you guys may have heard, the honeybee population is in decline uh, because of many reasons, pesticides, herbicides, um, the transportation of them thousands of miles across the United States to do pollination work. There's lots of reasons, but what's fascinating about these is they're far, lo far lower maintenance to deal with. They don't make honey. Um, basically the way they work is they collect pollen, they go inside a little hole or tube, they lay the egg and put pollen in there so that the newly hatched larva has food to feed on, and then they'll come out of the hole later. Um, they think they may turn into a cocoon and then emerge in spring. So this is a spring and summer insect. You know, I'm just starting to learn about these. So I highly recommend going to listen to Epic Gardening's podcast featuring Dave. And I'll put a link in the description for that. So let's get into the kit and I'll talk more details about these guys. And then you're going to see me actually install this. And the mason bee cocoons are in here. So we'll get to see what they look like and set this, this whole thing up in spring and summer. Um, I'm really hoping that this will increase the production of my cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, all the different summer fruiting crops that I'm going to be planting this year. And very excited that this is sort of another solution for the pollination problems that um, we may be facing. If we work with these more native bees, this is a way that we can pollinate far more efficiently. And even if we do lose portions of the honeybee populations, working with these bees might be a great solution um, for these orchards that are having problems getting the pollination done by honeybees. So here is the kit and the kit on the Crown Bees website. There's a couple different types you can get. This is their more basic one. This is called the Bee Basic Bee Hut. So the mason bees use the eight millimeter larger holes and then the leaf cutter Summer bees use the smaller tubes there. And these are just a little reeds or bamboo shoots, I think, inside of this tube. So this is one of them that you, you can mount and your mountain needs above ground. Then there are more advanced one. This is the bee chalet. So it has a roof to keep the rain off. So they come with two sets of the bee homes. This is for the mason bees and this is for the leaf cutters. They gave, they, it comes with lots of instructions and what to do. Also inside of here, they give you the Invita Bee Spray. So it's a little bit of a, it's like a floral spray to attract them so that they're, make sure they're going to your home. And then also in the kit, 
really important. This is a bag of clay. We're actually going to make some clay. They need clay as part of their nesting. So what they do is the females will mate with the males, then they'll go inside of here, lay their egg, and then go outside the nest and take some mud and seal the larva or the egg inside of the reed. And then later they come out. So that's for that. And then this they call the humidity bee. So when you first get these, since I'm in San Diego, I can go ahead and um, install these right away. But if you're in a colder climate, you need to wait till the temperatures are about 50 to 55, and then um, you can put them out. You also need to wait till there's flowers and blossoms for them, which I do have um, around my house. I've got apple tree, the aloe's starting to bloom, borage. So what you do is you put a couple drops of water onto this little filter inside, and then you would put your bees in here and then store this into the, the fridge until it's the correct temperature. I'm just giving you guys basic instructions, but they give you a full instruction booklet here on how to do all this stuff. So it's pretty simple. Then at the end of the season, um, they'll fill these up with coco cocoons and you can store the cocoons for the next spring and you just keep them in the fridge and your humidity and then you keep the cycle going. So it's pretty interesting. So I don't need the, the trays for my leaf cutters yet because I don't have them. Today we're doing the mason bees. So what I'm gonna do with this, we need to go install this somewhere. So for the bee chalet here, um, they've got a little thing for a nail. So you're just gonna, I'm gonna nail this into the tree tree right over there and then for this I think I'm going to attach it to my chicken coop and kind of put it underneath the eave so it's nice and protected under there from the rain so I'm going to go check out how that's going to work and then put it together okay, I'm just going to put a nail on either side just to keep it a little bit more stable okay there we go I'm pretty happy with that so the reason I'm facing it this way is that this direction is east. And the mason bee is a little more sensitive to warmer temperatures, but they need the light in the morning to help wake them up and get them going. I'm also doing this underneath my pecan tree right here, so that when it wakes up, there's gonna be a ton of shade under here and it'll stay very cool. Um, as far as wind goes, the wind usually blows from west to east here. So it's not really in a place where I think this is gonna blow over or anything. What I could do is drive a screw in through here and then it would make it super secure. So what they said to do, on these reeds they have a closed end. You wanna show the open end facing forward. I'm just gonna lay them on top of the nesting tray and then you wanna push the tray all the way to the back of the wood so that it's enclosed. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the be attractant that they gave me. Said to use like 10 sprays in there. Spraying all the holes, I'm gonna spray back there. All right, one more for good luck. Okay, so now let's get the bees out. Check this out. Oops, one of them woke up. So here's one of them right there. There's one of them, look at that. So they don't sting you, that's which is really cool. Let's go put him in his new home. Uh oh. I think he likes me more than the home. There we go. All right, there it is in there. Pretty cool. So since I was a little worried about the cocoons, I went ahead and asked Damaris, who works for Crown Beast. Shout out to you, dude. Thanks for your help. And he sent me this video. And so this is a really good way to release the cocoons because we want to keep them protected from sunlight or birds or the wind blowing them out. So you can take an old paper towel roll. Just staple it. Okay, so we'll just take the cocoons and pour them in. And then, 
you'll just put one staple on the other side and that way they're still able to escape and fly and this will just help to release them safely. I just wanted to show you these rubber bands. You want to make sure to leave these on um, but what's cool is that if you want to get more of these trays in the future uh, you can always expand these to fit more of the trays inside but you want to leave them all joined together um, so it's just a little bit stronger and will blow away. So now all we're going to do is just place our toilet roll with the cocoons in and we'll push it all the way to the back. There we go. So now it's completely out of the sunlight and they have a, a view of the sun coming up. We got our rubber bands on there and all our reeds are laid out and that's it. It's all ready to go. I've already sprayed out my attractant on there as well. Okay, so now for this mud, it says to just add a half a cup of water to this bag. And they need this clay for their nesting. They need it so that they can close up the holes in there. Now you might have some natural really clay soil around, which I kind of do, but it needs to stay wet so that they have the ability to, to pick it up and everything. So what I'm going to do is just put it underneath my worm compost setup right here and that area will stay super wet, it never receives sun under there. It's an area I could easily add a little bit of water to if I ever need to, but I shouldn't have to because of how I'm going to dig the hole. There's the mud. I'm going to dig out a little hole here. And this is per Dave's advice. He said it'll stay wet a lot easier if you just bury it, kind of. And now, gotta get it out of the bag. And these guys can dig, so they'll be able to access it. And I'll leave a little bit on the surface there. So, maybe I should just turn the bag inside out and push it out. I got it all over my hands now. That's okay. This clay is really good for my skin. There we go. Well, you guys could probably do this a lot better than I could my first time, but it was pretty easy. It wasn't that difficult at all. Nice, and then the mud washes off real easy. That's just water. Now I'll go set up my other bee hut as well. And then once the population gets going, they'll probably find that other home. So I think I found a pretty darn good spot for the little bee hut, and I think I'm gonna put it right up there. I, can't, I think at some point in summer, the sun does set over there a bit. So I'll just need to put a little shade up for them. Okay, so now it's protected from rain and sun. Just threw the two by four in here so it can't fly out. I can still remove it if I need to. But I can just kind of jam it back in there and it's good to go. And I just realized, you know, I should put some of the mason bee cocoons in here as well. Um, the leaf cutters also can go in this tube. They have the different sizes, the smaller sizes for the leaf cutters as well. So I'm going to take a few of the cocoons from the chalet over there, toss them in here, and also I'm going to spray a little bit of the attractant in there as well. Okay, so I'll just set that in here, and then we'll come check on that in a few days, see if they came out, and then remove the box. All right, so that was my first time setting up some mason bees and also a setup for the leaf cutters as well. I'll get the leaf cutters um, in another month or two. Um, they're, they're a little bit more suited for hotter weather. So um, I'm excited to see how these mason bees work out and learn more about them. I still need to read. Obviously, I don't know that much and I need to keep reading and learning. Uh, be sure to go check out the Epic Gardening podcast. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description to the episodes that David is on of Crown Bees so you guys can learn more about them and how amazing they are. So, and if you'd like to uh, check out what Crown Bees has to offer, they've got a ton of really good information about their bees and why they're so important, why pollination is important on their website, crownbees.com. And this is just like a fantastic way to get introduced to bees as well, because, you know, I started with honeybees and those are way more intimidating. They can sting you, you gotta wear a full suit. This is so low barrier to entry. I think it'd be great for kids. So definitely check it out. And um, as I go through the season, 
I'll update you guys. I'm going to show another video, you know, once they're, um, you know, all alive and pollinating and get, try to get some cool footage of them actually pollinating my plants and really excited to see the difference in fruit yields that I get from all my summer veg this year. Also, you know, I've got berries and grapes, so it'll be really interesting to see the fruit production this year and see if they, if they help out a lot, which I'm sure that they will.